Let's give it up for the worship team. Amen. Hallelujah. What a beautiful day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome everybody to Living Word of Upland. Right now, let's get ready to just give them praise, God. We thank you, hallelujah, right now, in the name of Jesus. We dedicate this service to you, God. We ask, for God, that your presence, Father God, would be evident, Lord God, as we leave, Father God. Today, Lord God, we ask that your spirit, Lord God, will continue to flush out anything that isn't of you, anything that tries to distract us away from your word, God. We thank you, Father God, for everything that you have done, God. I lift up all of my brothers and sisters that are here today, God. Come on, church. Give them a big hand clap. Amen. Hallelujah. Get ready to get this Holy Ghost party started. Amen. Everybody can go ahead and have a seat. At this time, we're going to call up Pastor Mondo. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's give up for Jesus this morning. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Let's give up for Jesus. Today, this morning, and um, I don't know about you, but um, you know, right now, you know, we want to keep that spirit moving within our hearts, amen. But um, you know, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and um, you know, uh, uh, talk about a little bit about our announcements, and uh, it's just a reminder next Sunday, uh, five o'clock, we're gonna have our fourth year anniversary. How many are excited, amen? Oh, come on, how many can really get excited? It's four years that we've been out here in Upland and, and, you know, doing the work that God has called us to do. And uh, it's exciting for us. So remember, Sunday morning we'll be here. And then Sunday at 5 o'clock, actually, my pastor from our spiritual father from uh, Living Word of Chino Hills, we're going to come out here and give out that word. Amen. But it's something that just to remind you, you know, next week, you know, this is our fourth year. And be a part of it. You know, many of us, you know, we might have some other plans or whatever, but, you know, this is something that is good because we're all moving forward towards the things of God, amen? And I'm going to tell you like this, I, I, you know, there's a lot of things that, that take place in my life, but I don't want to miss out, amen. you know, and that's the way it should be in our hearts. We don't want to miss out for what God has for our life because, remember, the Bible talks about the, if, if you're not going to be ready, he's just going to come and... uh I mean, if he's important in your life, I, I, for me, he's important in my life, my family's life, my children's life, my grandchildren's life, and, and all my all my people that I know. So we need to make him first a priority. And uh, I know that that we say the church is the people. If you're the church, then we need to come together and do this, and that way to encourage other people that are coming out here that need help. Can I get an amen? Oh, come on. Can I get an amen? In other words, me and my wife can't do all this by ourselves. We need all of us to come together. Amen. So remember, next week, double two two double whammies. Amen. Uh, in the morning and at five. All right. Oh, come on, let's get excited for it. Basically, I want to represent because if Chino Hills outnumbers us, oh man, that's gonna be like, oh my God, everybody. Because last, I believe last two years ago, because of the pandemic. Uh, we, we had a uh, hundred and sixty eight people here So, you know, and I think that we only had like 25 but everybody was here of ours We had like 25 so if you're in that number mark your calendars and be a part of it. Amen yeah. But everybody knows what time it is. It's time to come up for us for today. Amen. Oh, come on. Let's get excited this morning Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Yes, He's excited yes. today. Yes. Be in the house of the Lord. Yeah. All right, before we get started, um, just like to call up our ushers. And if anybody needs a tight envelope, just a show of hands. Buddy. <laughs> All right. All right, so there's three ways to give. So we have the Zell, the Zell app which is the easiest way, and we have, you can choose the option of either taking an old school traditional way by getting an envelope or writing a check to our, to Living Word of Upland. Okay, and if anybody needs any envelopes, just show of hands. All right. All right, how many of us, uh, how many of us love to worship? Love to worship and praise the Lord. Amen? See so, yeah. I don't know, but, uh, 
during worship, I feel a, a sense of freedom during it, you know? Like, chains break during worship when we praise the Lord, amen? See, and it's during this time that we may acknowledge this, uh, this excitement, this excitement and this joy that we have. It needs to overflow into our giving. Because giving is a form of worship. Amen? Yes. See, uh, when we worship the Lord, we're giving our hearts, we're saying thank you for everything that he does in our lives. Thank you for his promises, most of all. Amen? So, um, yeah, so when we give, it's a uh, give with a willing heart. Give with an open heart. Amen? Amen. All right. Before, oh, I'm a little mixed up. I'm sorry, you guys. All right. All right, I'm going to, let me, I'm just going to share a scripture with you guys. I'm sorry, you guys. I don't mean to screw this up, but on Luke 638, it says, Give and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. See, in this scripture, Jesus is speaking to them. See, he promises, what you give, you'll get back. But not just that, he'll overflow your blessing. Yes, so, right here it says, a good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Doesn't mean to grab your car and run it over. It means running over, overflowing, running over the rim. Amen. See, when we give, we shouldn't expect anything back. Because right. Acts twenty thirty five says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Yes, Amen. See, when we give, we should do it full hearted, full of like, willing, willingly. Yeah. You know, to plant that seed in someone else's heart, Amen. so they can plant that seed in someone else's heart. It might just save a life. Amen. 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 See, the amount of generosity, grace, and compassion that we give to others is very important. So we need to acknowledge this. Like I said, let's give our blessings to others, not... <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let's have our heart on the Lord. Let's have our heart on the Lord's name. Just give. Just give our hearts to Him today. Amen. Amen. Uh, if we go all right, I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so we got just let's pray. Let's, God's heavenly Father, thank yes, you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to just give to you, my Lord. I ask that you open our hearts today, my Lord. Let us uh, let these blessings multiply, my Lord, for growth, my Lord. Let them let it multiply for 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 renewing, my Lord, renewing in our hearts, renewing in our minds, my Lord. Whatever strongholds are on us, my Lord, in us, my Lord, we ask that you cleanse us, my Lord, with your precious blood. We ask that your word be mighty today, my Lord, and we ask that you let let your word uh, 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 impart in our passage so we can impart to us, my Lord. So, my Lord. We thank you, we love you, we praise you, and honor you, my Lord. In Jesus, my name, we pray. Amen. 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 Let's give it up for Jesus this morning, amen. We're going to go ahead and dismiss the ushers and invite you to get that light on in the back. And if you can put it down the mic a little bit, choo-choo's. Thank you. Hallelujah. Does it sound a little hollow? Yeah. Yeah, yeah still some. Just, just put the mic down a little. Testing one, two, three. How many are excited this morning? Yes. Oh, come on. How many are excited this morning? I, I, I truly believe I'm not. I need to be excited, you know, to be in the house of God. But um, we're going to go ahead and jump into our word right now. And if you have your Bibles with you right now, and if you're uh, taking notes, we started a new topic of getting up out of the grave. Amen. Part uh, one was last week, but uh, this is part two. So how many of us know that we need to get up out of that grave? Amen. For some of us, I believe that we might be in conditions in our life that we feel that, man, that we're just bound, amen. And I don't know about you, you know, especially with everything that's been going on in life, you know, things that we look at, you know, in life, it's like, man, when is this going to end? 
But you know, today, this morning, we're going to read off of Ezekiel chapter 37. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start it off in 11. And I don't know about you, but maybe our bones feel like they're dried up. Amen. And uh, if you read the whole chapter of 37, you know, this is when uh, the Lord had spoken to the Son of Man, amen, and which is in Ezekiel. And uh, he was prophesying over the dead bones, amen. But it, it was a, a book that was written to encourage the Israelites in their most difficult hour. And I don't know about you, maybe we might be in that season. Maybe we're in that condition in our lives that we feel like, man, hopeless and nothing going right, amen. But let me tell you today. God is going to get you out of that place, amen? amen? And we have to understand that because, you know, God has something good for us. But sometimes, you know, we're in these places, in these conditions, maybe because, you know, we're just stuck in that, in that place. But today, this morning, if we go ahead and turn to our scripture, the word of God reads like this. Then he said to me, son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. Does it ever feel that way? Sometimes we feel like, man, you know, I'm hopeless. And then, and then it goes on. Therefore, prophesy says to them, amen. This is what the servant Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. Amen. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you. And you will live. And you will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I am Lord. And then it goes on. I have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, today, Father God, for your word, Father God, that you have prepared, Lord. Right now, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you continue to move in this house, Father God. Continue to move by your spirit, Lord. Right now, Father, let us open up our minds, Lord. Let us be able to attain your word into our hearts, Lord. Let's not look at the speaker, Father God, but understand, Lord, that even you put me aside, Father God, so you can continue to move by your spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Let's give it up for Jesus this morning. We may be seated in the presence of the Lord. You know, last week we talked about it, and I'm going to continue to go on it because I believe that many of us need to understand, you know, that A, maybe we feel in this condition. You know, there's certain things in our life that we feel like, man, that we're, we're like in a grave, amen. You know, nothing going on. Things are just like, man, like, there, like there's no end or there's no light at the end of the tunnel. Sound familiar? You see, Ezekiel means God will strengthen. We have to understand that, you know, in the condition that we're in, you know, God, we need to start focusing back on God and not on our own strength. Many of us try to do things on our own, and that's why we can never get ahead. Because we will get overwhelmed. We will get into that spot where we'll feel like helpless, hopeless. There, there's nothing happening because why? We try to do things on our own. Tell your neighbor. He's talking to you this morning. You can't do it on your own. So now, we're going to talk about what is a grave. Don't all raise your hands at one time. Amen. But what is a grave? In a grave, I'm going to talk about some things because I believe that we might find ourselves in these areas in our life. You see, a grave is a place of hopelessness. You know, if you find yourself sometimes being hopeless, like, man, when is it going to change? What's, what's going to take place? But nothing's happening. We consider ourselves that we're in a grave. These are the things that we talked about last week. I want to kind of go through them fast. So we're talking about what is a grave. A grave is a place where people abandon, are abandoned and forgotten. You know, when you're going through something, 
You're always trying to cry out for help for someone, but no one seems to hear you. You might find yourself in that place. Or a grave is a place of dryness, amen? Maybe your financial things, everything going haywire, man, it's just dried up. There's nothing there, there's nothing happening, and you find yourself that you're all dried up in this. Maybe it could be spiritually. Maybe the Spirit of God is not moving within you because why? When you get dried up, you start feeling that the passion of God is not even in our hearts. We can find ourselves in this place. You know, our income, our finances, our health, our marriage, our job is dried up. Out of a sudden and unexpectedly, amen. Or a grave can be a place of darkness, amen. Being stuck in sin. You know, the same thing keep going and going. Then we can say we're in the grave. Or also the grave that we know, it's a burial ground, amen. Where the destinies are buried, amen, and sealed. Perhaps your calling, your purpose, your blessings are not being lived out. And God says, no, son and daughter, today there's something more. Yes, I want to tell you something more. So he's saying, I will open up your graves. Amen. Understand when God opens something up. Yes. It's something that is good. Yes. Like the Nacho Libre says, real good. Amen. <laughs> you got to understand that it's something that is good. Being in those dry, barren places, amen. You open up the graves, amen. But how many of us know that we need to respond? Amen. Yes, right. Tell your neighbor, we need to respond. And it's going to take work. So what happens? God is ready to open up graves and bring you out and restore you back to life, amen. In verse 12, he says, Therefore the prophecy and say unto them that says the Lord, Behold, O my people, I will open up your graves. How many want your graves opened up? Amen. Yes. How many want to receive the full blessing that God has for you? How many want all the stuff that God is going to give you? I don't know about you, but if you don't want it, I'll take it. Amen. You can give it to me. Amen. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to move in. Okay, Lord. Well, it is what it is. You open up my grave. I'm not going to be stuck here. I'm going to continue to move forward. Amen. So let's go on. When we talk about when she opens up your graves, we talked about last week. What is the first? Well, let's find out what the definition of opens. It means to be open wide. Amen. You know, when God does something, amen, he's going to open it wide. He's going to let you move in and come on, let's go. You see, to open wide means specifically to loosen, to begin, to break forth. Amen. 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 But what is he open? He wants us to open up our eyes. I believe that many of us have our eyes closed. Yeah. Yeah. Too much. Yeah. And that's why we find ourselves where we're at. And there's more to it, amen? amen? If we don't respond, we're going to miss out. You know, if we don't respond, we're going to miss out. Yeah. Many of us are, we're, we're walking around with closed eyes. Amen? amen? And Acts 28, 27 says, For these people's heart has become callous. Amen? You know, callous. You know, our hearts have been callous. Because why? We're not, we're not really opening up. You know, and then it goes on. They hardly hear with their ears. And they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they might see with their eyes and hear with their ears. Understand with their hearts in turn. And I would heal them. You know, um, last week uh, I, I did, uh, 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 what was it, a service at the mother church of getting up. And was talking about the invalid man. And it's like in the same thing, you know, being healed, amen. I don't know about you, but how many of you want to be healed today? Amen. Yes. And, and, and if you understand, you know, we need healing in all different pers well, perspectives in life that we have. Some of us need spiritually healing. Some of us need physical healing. Some of us need healing through our relationships with others. We need healing, yes. amen. 
But how are we going to get that healing is that we're going to have to respond. We're going to have to get in. Amen? Amen. So tell your neighbor, let God heal our hearts this morning. So now that we understand that once he opens up our eyes, amen, and Psalms 119.18 says, Open up my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. Amen. Acts 26, 17, 19 says, I will rescue you from your own people and the Gentiles. I am sending you to them to open up their eyes and turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. So they may receive forgiveness of the sins and place among those who are sanctified by faith in me. We got to understand that we need light. So we can really see with our spiritual deadness. Amen. I don't know about you, but when I, you know, serve God, my passion is to serve God with my full heart. Amen. Yeah. I try to do things on my own and, and it never turned out to nothing, but left me in that condition of being hopeless. But God began to do something when I started getting in. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you got to get in. Amen. And then in Luke 24, 31 says, Then their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. You see, when the grave is open, also what happens? First, it opens up our eyes, but now it opens up our minds. Amen. How do you see yourself this morning? You know, we're always in that in that condition in ourselves, feeling sorry for ourselves, or maybe in that pity party. Remember this, God has already won that battle. Amen. You're already a saved child. You know, we're a child of God, amen, regardless of what the situation is. James 1 to, uh, through 4 says, call it all joy in all circumstances. But if we're always being defeated, amen, because of what we hear or anything that's going on in life, the enemy has us in that area. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I call it joy. I say, okay, Lord, like when I share, you know what, different levels, more devils, amen. If I want to go higher, I'm going to fight some more, amen, and I got to fight for it. Amen. It's not just going to fall in my lap. Right. Don't give up. Tell your neighbor, don't give up. But when our minds are sound, then we're able to continue to keep walking in this fight. When they're not sound, when they're all the cares of the world, everything that is coming in, our worriness, all these things that are bombarding us, it's not going to let us keep a sound mind. And when we don't have a sound mind, then that's when we make wrong decisions. Could I get an amen today? And I believe that this is what it is. When we start opening up our minds, we're going to see the perspective of life, of the way, all the things that are coming against you, that we know that we have an opposition that's coming against us. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Luke 24, 45 says, Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Many of us says, Pastor, I don't understand what I read. Well, you got to pray too. Once you start praying, the scriptures will start making sense to you. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> but you got to get in it. Many of us say it's too hard. And we don't get in it. And then we get stuck. Yeah. How many are ready to get their graves opened up this morning? Amen. <clears throat> yes, amen. Or just one person? So uh, open up our mind. It will cause you to come out of your graves. <clears throat> Look at how in Revelations 2, 3 reads. But this is in the Message Bible. Yeah. It reads like this. Up on your feet. Take a deep breath. Maybe there's life in you yet. But I wouldn't know it by looking at your busy work. Nothing of God's work has been completed. 
Your condition is desperate. Think of the gift you once had in your hands. The message you heard with your ears. Grasp it again and turn back to God. You know, church, I really believe, you know, in the, in the areas that we are right now in our lives, you know, things are, are getting crazy right now. And I don't know about you, but I want my grandchildren, from my grandchildren, great-great-grandchildren, if we have some, I want them, not yet, but we have grandchildren. But I want at least through them to understand the truth, amen? I want to leave them at least in that part. And um, believe me, there's so much stuff going on right now. And, and we got to get right. You know, we, we put God always on the shelf or second. And that's, he's supposed to be first in our life. You know, yeah, we're at church. Our church should give us the direction why we're here. While we're moving and while we keep going. Yeah. But you know the fellowship is important too. Yeah. What's more important than God in your life? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'll let it sit right there and marinate a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So now we're talking about getting up out of the grave. So we know now once our graves are open. We know what a grave is. It's going to open up our eyes and our mind. Right? Yes. But then also. For now, today that we're going to talk about, he says, I put my spirit in you. Amen. Thank you. And you shall know that I am the Lord. I have opened up your graves. And then he says, oh, I brought you out of the graves. And I shall put my spirit in you. Amen. And you shall live. Yes. Yes. Come on, let's clap for Jesus. And we're going to clap for Jesus. So as we look at verse 13 and 14 and learn that God does not only open up our graves and leave it at that, but there's a purpose behind it. God is putting his spirit in you. Amen. You see, how many of us know when God says something, it's a decree and it's a mandate. Amen. It's a command. It's an official order. It's us as believers, we need to be following the word of God. Amen? Amen? And that's what you have to understand. What does the Spirit do in your life? How many of us know that we can't do it on our own, but Jesus, as he ascended into heaven, he promised us with the gift, the gift of the Spirit. Amen? Yes, amen. And what is the Spirit of God? The Spirit of God is our helper. You know when you're going to do something wrong? And you get that conviction in your heart yes, that tells you don't do it. Yeah. But then you got the other voice, ah, go ahead and do it. Ain't nobody going to know, right? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. You know, you only know. And God, of course. You can't hide it from God. You can hide it from your pastor and everybody else. Yes. But you know what you do in secret that you shouldn't be doing? A naughty, naughty, right? <laughs> Someone says, I'm just going to drink up in small sauce. Hopefully, and then out of a sudden, someone sees you. Hey, what are you doing? Oh, my God. That wasn't mine. That was there that term earlier. Hello, somebody. <laughs> or a pink Cadillac on 20s. Hello. They have all these weird names now. But what, what is the Spirit of God knows you? So you you got to understand when the Spirit of God is imparted in you, you're going to be able to make godly decisions. Amen. Amen? You're going to be able to understand, but then you got the other voice. You already know that other voice. And some of it is just yourself, your flesh, your own flesh. Yeah. And what to fulfill the desires of the flesh. It's, I can't even say sometimes it's the enemy. Yeah, the enemy tempts you. Keeps passing you by the bar. Show him, show him right there. I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to stop, but you end up stopping. Anyways, let's move on. The Spirit of God will move you. Tell your neighbor, it's going to move you. How is it going to move you? It's going to move you to walk. Amen? I believe when the Spirit of God, you know, from the beginning of Genesis, the Spirit of God was moving on this earth. 
It's a moving spirit. It doesn't just not stand still, amen? When God says move, we're going to move. When he says stand still, we stand still. Amen. But it's a moving spirit, amen? It's going to move you. It's going to make you walk. It's going to make you move forward. It's going to let you grow. It's going to lead you, amen? amen? Also, it's going to make you proceed, progress, advance, amen? Or stir up or even shift you, amen? That's what the Spirit of God will do. It's not going to keep you in the same place. Like when I talk, when we come into these doors, something should be changed already within our life. We shouldn't be living the same way that we came in. But it's the Spirit of God that's going to draw you towards Him. Yeah. You know what I share? You know, when we open up the altars, right? The altar is not... It, the altar is for you. This is where the presence of God is by His Spirit. You know, I was sharing that. God is omni. He's presence everywhere with us. Yeah. But when you come to Him, it shows a sign of surrender. I'm going to tell you like this. You might not be perfect, believe me, because I know we're not perfect. If you're perfect, maybe you should be ministering the word here for instead of me, amen? But I know I ain't perfect. But I come and bring it up to the altar and leave it here, amen? And don't take it back with you. Just surrender it to him. You know, let, let show God that, hey, I'm here. I want to I wanna continue to move. So when the spirit of God is in you, the Spirit of God in your in you will cause you to what? To move. To move you forward. And Habakkuk 3.19 says, The Lord God is my strength. My source of courage. My in, invincible army. He has made my feet steady and sure like hinds feet. Makes me walk forward with spiritual confidence. On my high places. You see when you start moving forward. I believe that there's many people out there. That need to be encouraged. But if you're not moving forward in the spirit of God. We're not going to see that. And I believe that there's many men. Women out there. That are struggling. And when the spirit of God is in you. I, I don't know if anybody's ever felt like that. Oh man I got I to gotta let them know about Jesus. No one here? No. no one's ever felt. I know the home. We've always been out there. Hey, you know what? I just, hey, there's something about this person I just need to reach out to. Not but if the Spirit of God is not in you, the confidence is not going to be there. Yeah. What happens all the time? Yeah, I know I need to tell this person something, but I don't have the confidence to do it. The or the courage. Yeah. I'm not saying that the Spirit of God is not in you because you know that it is. It's just maybe not strong enough to continue to move that, that place to make you move forward. You know, to me, I mean, I minister to wherever I can. My family and all that. And sometimes, you know, there's a, a balance in it because I always want to try to get them to come over. Amen. I know they're not perfect. I'm not perfect. But hey, you know what? That shouldn't stop you not to come to the things of God. That shouldn't stop you not to come to church. Amen. This will want to get you to come even more. Amen. Because I do want to get healed in these areas. So tell your neighbor, we need to start moving forward. Also, it's going to cause you to grow. You know, when the spirit of God is in you. It will cause you to grow. That means you're going to start reading your word more. You're still going to start getting into prayer. Yes. You're going to start in, in, uh, imparting yourself, your life into the things of God. That's the way I grew. <coughs> I'm home grew, amen. I started in the home and I continue to go. Yeah. Uh, that's that's it, you know. Everybody knows, you know, when you make when. Uh, Grandma, my grandma used to have her little garden. It was homegrown. Hey, it was good. Man, the chiles, everything that she made, man, it was like, Jesus Christ. But it was good. But that's the thing that will cause you to grow. But how are you going to grow? you got to get in it. And right now you're in it. Continue to keep moving in it. And that way you can grow. 
You know, like I said, you know, many of us come in a condition, in a condition of dry bones, just stuck, nothing happening in life, and we stay in that condition. We can come to church as one and stay in that condition. Why? Because I truly believe that we haven't given it all to God. Uh, you know, God does not want you uh, 99% and still want to keep your life 1%. He wants you all the way. So that way he can begin to do what he needs to do in your life. And I'm going to tell you like this, okay? Don't worry that you're not perfect. Don't worry, you still do. Just come to church. Let the process take place in your life. That's what I did. I had to come into the home. And it began there. And I started being able to empty up myself that I knew, man, that I had all these things in my life that I thought that I didn't have. But I was in there. I was in there allowing God to do what he had to do to start emptying me out with the ugly stuff. So he can start putting in the good stuff. Amen. And I kept going and going. Was it hard at times? Yes, it was. But did I give up? No, I didn't. Because why? I, I was tired of living a life of dry bones. Nothing happening within my life. Just being stuck there, amen. Not having a prayer life. Not being able to read my word. Not being able to have the spirit of God within my life. To be able to reach out souls. I was tired of that. Amen. You know, people, loved ones going towards a place where, man, did, man, if I was able to reach out to them before they were in that condition. But what I had to do, I had to grow. I couldn't be living the life that I used to think was my life. Like I always share, living in the neighborhood with my lowrider car with hydraulics, amen? <laughs> but if you guys want to buy me one, a 65 Impala, amen? <laughs> On Dayton's, all right? I'll even take a 66, all right? <laughs> but yeah, it was in that condition that will cause you to grow. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow spiritually, mature in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes. To Him be the glory, honor, majesty, splendor, both now and to the day eternity. Amen. Comes. Amen. We need to grow spiritually. Amen. What else? happens when the Spirit of God is in you. It will cause you to pursue God's purpose. You see, we got to understand this. We all have a purpose in this life. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for God's plan is to have a purpose in a future, to be with Him, to fulfill our purpose in this world. And it's not to fulfill our own purpose. But many of us are confused on it, and we're still trying to pursue our own purpose. And you can be in the church, but still the purpose of God is not in your heart. Yeah. you got to understand, God has a different plan. His plans are not yours. Amen. He'll bless you, believe me. Once you start understanding it, He's going to bless you in a mighty way. Yeah. But you got to keep looking up, up in the heavens. And believe me, I, I, I believe because of the conditions that we might have come in, you know, the things that are going around in, in our life, that we lose that focus or we think that God can't do it for us. Believe me, God has a better plan than we have for our own lives. He knows us better. He knows us from the beginning. He know, knows us from when we were knitted in the womb, amen. And his purpose is to fulfill what he has called us to do. Tell your neighbor, I can't give up. I got to keep going. I got to pursue God's purpose. Look at, you know, the story of Saul. When Paul, before Paul was Paul, he was Saul. He used to kill Christians. But he had an encounter with Jesus Christ. And it changed the whole perspective of looking at Jesus the way he had to. You see, he lived the, the Bible in the way he wanted to understand it. You know, many of us want to read the Bible and we want to put it into the way we want to understand it. That's going to fulfill our purpose in it. It's, that's not the way God works. God's purpose is different than ours. 
The Bible clearly states we won't understand God's ways. Because God's ways are not our ways. When you're being moved by the Spirit of God, God is going to show you His ways. And His ways is what? Right. His ways is right. Now look at your neighbor real slow. Say, you hear that? And say amen, I got it. And then let your other neighbor know, did you get it? So you don't leave them out. And then also, when God's spirit is in you, it will cause you to prosper. How many want to prosper? How many are tired of being stuck in that same dead end place? How many are really tired? I mean, how many are really tired? I, 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 to me, I'm like, man, sometimes I feel like, ay, ay, ay. Well, that's the way I used to feel. I yeah, yeah, amen. I felt in that place like nothing was going right. My whole land was not healed, amen. Everything was just all falling apart. Yeah, sometimes it gets like that still. But now I just, what's it called? I, I just go with it. I, I continue to move forward in it. I don't get stuck in that place. If I got stuck in that place then I'm going to get stuck. If I'm going to look at my own, you know, things and circumstances, okay, you know what I say? Okay, Lord, what do you want me to learn from this? And sometimes it's going to be harder. It's going to seem longer. Man, Lord, how long is this going to be? I don't know, Lord, but hey, whatever it is, I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to give up. You know, in that time, sometimes we feel like that. We just feel like, man, this is too hard. I'll throw in the towel. Yeah. Don't throw in the towel, church. Amen. Believe me, yeah. God's developing you. Amen? Amen. And at the end, you will prosper. Amen. John 1, 2 says, Beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I, your soul prosperly and spiritual. Amen? So now you know. And then in verse 14 again. So it talks about. And I shall put my spirit in you. And then what else will he do? He says. And you shall live. Amen. How many want to live? Amen. This yes. morning. Amen. Amen. Well when we talk about living. It's talking about to be revived. Amen. Because like I said. We came in a condition. That many of us were dead. Amen. And now he's saying, I will cause you to live. Yes. Those dry bones. Amen. Live means to revive. To be alive, amen. To give life. To nourish up. To persevere. To quicken. To recover. And to repair. Amen. amen. So now, and you shall live. It means to revive. Let's talk a little bit about revive. Number one, it says you will not Revive us and bring us to life again. That your, your people may rejoice in you. Will you not revive us? And this is in Psalms 85, 6. And Isaiah 57, 15 says, For those says the high and lofty ones, the inhibited eternity, whose name is holy, I will dwell in high holy places with them. Also of a contrite and humble spirit. <clears throat> to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the con contract ones. So we got to understand that we got to be humble as well. Yeah. You know, you want life. I believe that many of us have been going through certain things in life. And right now it, it's a time to let God give us that life back. Yeah. And also it's going to get cause us to be quickened. Ephesians number two, it's quickened. Ephesians two, one and three says, and you have, he quickened who were dead in the trespasses of sins, where in the time past ye walked according to the course of the world. Meaning that we used to walk in the beliefs of the world, but now that we need to be quickened in the spirit, amen, amen. to be removed of all the things that are taking place. And it's in Ephesians 2, 1 and 3. And also to live means that we're going to recover I don't know about you, but I believe that many of us need to recover this morning. Yeah. We're almost done, church. 1 Samuel 38, 
Means that David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after these troops? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fall recover all. I don't know about you, but I believe that I need to start getting recovered. And I believe, you know, that what God has for my life, I want to get really the full benefit of it. Amen. Yeah. I'm tired of being in this tribune area. And if we can all stand this morning. And also to be whole. We got to understand that, that, you know, with all this stuff that is taking place around here in this world right now, you know, God is trying to wake us up. Yeah. 